Hey everybody, it's CVH here, and today we'll be heading back into the ladder after a few news videos and discussion videos that uh, you should check out if you haven't already. A lot of big things have happened for Legends in the past week or so. We'll be hopping back into the ladder with the uh, Mono Yellow deck, or so I'm calling it, even though it has two uh, non-yellow cards, the two Triumphant Yarls, in addition to the Crusader class Rift Thane, obviously. I've been playing this deck just a bit on stream, and usually when I mention that I've been playing a deck just a bit, it's because I just don't have enough games to really fully understand all the matchups. Uh, but in this case, I really mean that I've just played a bit of this deck. Uh, I think it has potential, however, because the red weight red rate so far has been uh, pretty good. Uh, I'm actually going to bring it up right now so I can check and track the stats from today. Uh, but yeah, if I remember correctly, it hasn't actually lost yet on the ladder. Of course, the sample size is very small. I think only three, four, or five games somewhere in there. As soon as I actually get there. Yeah, we've played four games so far. 4-0. Uh, so that's definitely uh, optimistic here. Wonder if we can keep it up. It is a pretty surprising deck. Uh, I might do a deck tech on it sometime in the future if it continues to perform. But it's basically a pretty aggressive yellow deck, as you can see. Uh, using Triumphant Yarl just because I felt like we'd run out of cards, even though we have the East March Crusader. So just an additional bit of uh, hand replenishment. We have a lot of things that are pretty easy to play. So it's very easy to use all three ring charges or like the first three turns naturally just to dump everything onto the board. And if we don't have follow-ups, while well, we might have a very impressive board presence, if it gets removed, we might just run out of steam. This deck also doesn't really have any direct damage from hand, like a Lightning Bolt or a Cliff Racer or anything. So we really have to make use of our creatures, and we have some very powerful ones to do that. Uh, we have Token Generators, which can like, take over the board by themselves, like Imperial Reinforcements and uh, Scouting Patrol. Ways to take advantage of those, of course, like the uh, Fifth Legion Trainer and Bruma, Bruma, Armor, excuse, Bruma Profiteer. I have some say Bruma Armor, the other one. Uh, Pit Lion, Resolute Ally, Morthal Executioner, really powerful 3-drops that can uh, ensure that we have a powerful board presence in the first few turns of the game. Uh, so yeah, let's see how this goes. Typically, I think we do want to have the Ring of Magicka. We might be up against a control deck, which makes me want to have the Triumphant Yara later, but I don't think it's quite worth a keep. So yeah, we'll ship it. Let's go for 2 and 2. Hoffinger, another potentially very swingy card. So against what we might think is Control Spell Sword, I think we can go ahead and play the Bruma Profiteer first. Um, eh. Well, I mean, we don't... It's it's really tough. We have the Execute now, so I think it's safer to play the Bruma Profiteer because uh, if, if I didn't if I didn't have the Execute, I'd probably play the 5th Legion Trainer just because of um, the threat of Windkeep Spell Sword being higher against this than uh, the threat of Execute being good against that. Uh, execute versus 5th Legion Trainer is a one-for-one. -one. Windkeep Spell Sword can trade very favorably into a Bruma Profiteer, but since... We already have the Execute. Uh, let's push the Profiteer first. We lose the potential to get an attack buff on the Profiteer next turn. We push an additional 2 damage immediately, have a more threatening board presence, and that could potentially be better in the long run. We'll see if he even has a play after we debated so much. He does not. <laughs> Alright, there's the Triumphant Yarl. Him not having a turn to play definitely signals us even more that it's a control deck. And we get the health buff off the, the Profiteer, which is not totally irrelevant against control, but it's just further insurance that we'll have the Yarl effect whenever we roll around to that time. Alright, he doesn't want me to play Ring of Magicka into Imperial Reinforcements, and we top deck the perfect card! Attack! East March Crusader, get the value. Another Hoffinger. That's what I'm talking about, this deck doesn't seem like it would work too well, but then, all of a sudden, uh, the first few turns go a little something like this can't remove them both. Alright, well, we can't get some Hoffinger value yet. It does seem like a more safe play, but uh, since we have the Ring of Magic up, playing East March is also fine, I think. Uh, there's a lot of cards we could draw here that would enable us to uh, utilize our Magicka our entire turn effectively. Any one or two drop would be fine. Uh, so we're not breaking your with this attack. Let's just go ahead and get the draw first, I think. No what. That's what I'm talking about. You won't foil and let's split the lanes a bit. Now even though we can play Jarl next turn with the ring, Hoffinger's looking pretty juicy. I really doubt he can remove more than one of these. Very difficult for a control spell sword to deal with that many things on the board this early. We're splitting the lanes a bit just because we're playing around the potential next turn Immolating Blast. Treeminder, okay, he's playing uh, the ramp version. See some with and some without recently. Pit line, another very powerful card, but not one I think we're too interested in playing currently. You I think we'll be doing this, and just playing Hoffinger in the right to keep the lane split evenly and going for some crazy value. 
So in case the first thing we hit is Jav and he hits the other attacker, I think we're going to attack with this one first and get some power split evenly across the lanes. Nice, we get some more card draw there. Seems good. Heirloom Greatsword. That's a card that Control Spellsword has a really hard time beating. Now, if he were going, if he was going to get something like a Lurking Mummy here, we could play Execute after that. But yeah. So he's probably going to need a Silence here on the Rift Thane. Otherwise, Execute's going to, or this uh, Greatsword's going to keep coming back turn after turn. He thinks he got rid of all the Hoffingers. He was going to see this game too. Doubtful. We had a good start, but not one that really cost us our hand. Well, he did have the Silence. Uh, I don't think he's going to enjoy what's going to happen this turn, though. I think we're going to play Bruma first. Let's get through the full the full health gain value, even though we don't really need to at this point. We could even take a favorable there, uh, but then we don't get uh, as many runes broken this turn. And we can hit him all the way down to four, which seems good. There's a plan. There's always a plan. He already can't trade with his 4-4 four, four into my 4-5 easily, so let's get some power on this, hopefully. Nice. Now, which one of these do we want buffed? I think we just want to buff this one. Yet again. Actually, that's not nice at all. What was I talking about? Yeah. Well, oh well. Let's see what this is. Alright, Steel Sword. Kind of a low roll. Just more power. Buffing these two, um, you know, makes Dawn's Wrath less of a threat, I guess. Or, you know, makes it less effective. I'm leading Blasts. Whoa. So he was already dead there half the time. Man, that's annoying. <laughs> Old K Warden and the premium one at that. All right, well, now we can probably... Well, I could say we use Yarl. We don't really need the Yarl yet. We can just play Rift Thane, Pit Lion, execute that, hit for two. Um, I guess Rift Thane can go on the right, Pit Lion can go on the left. Well, that actually cannot happen. That is the one way we can't do this. I guess we'll put the Rift Thane, which will have more power in the left. Pit Lion on the right to sort of split the lanes that way. We don't want the two most powerful things in the same lane. It's kind of not even worth talking about too much, though, because if he dons Wraths, he's dead on board, unless he also had an Execute. But yeah, this plays around dons Wrath Execute, clearing my entire board. Because if he dons Wraths, no matter what, there's going to be something over Execute um, that would be left on the board. And since he's at 9, Dawn's Wrath Execute's probably the main thing we're concerned about. Nothing else really seems to do it here. Aerostorm doesn't seem like the start. Old Gay Warden, we have another execute for that one. The waters of life. We see, you know, he played around the breakthrough, killing him, but we have the second execute. So we take the game. Nice. Well fought. By the egg of fine battle. Some good old mono yellow action. This goes to show you how Hoffinger can sort of just get out of control. Yeah, a lot of people playing the latter, it seems, with the renewed vigor in the game since the announcement of it being launched on uh, PC. I stopped playing at a, in the 20s, like two days ago, and we are already back. Well, we're in the 40s now, we're in the, the 30s. Yeah, a solid win there. Let's see if I can just... Right, Mono Yellow took the win against Control Spell Sword. Gotta keep track of your stats, guys. I strongly recommend it. I'm just using a simple Google Sheet. Just making sure... Alright, let's see what we have for another game. That one was pretty fast. Let's see if we can close out another one in a timely fashion. Got a Warrior. A solid 10 ranks ahead of me right now. What do we think about Warrior? I think we're happy we're not up against a Firebolt class yet again. I say we ship two cards and try to get a 1-drop or... Alright, we got a better curve it looks like. And we got a 1-drop. Nice. Let's see if he has an immediate answer for the Alkosh. The moon Warrior can answer it later in the game with a number of cards, though, like Earthbone Spinner, Shadow and Priest. Earthbone Spinner is a big one, because it straight up kills it no matter what keywords it got. <clears throat> Come and warm yourself. Ooh, that is not a control card, I don't think. Could be playing the, the token version with some... I don't even... I actually don't know the, the versions too well, so I should probably stop acting like I do. But Kvash Soldier seems pretty important here. If he's going to go into something like a raiding party, that'll prevent... Uh, my Alkosh from seemingly dying, unless it gets guard here. Did not. Good. Yeah, some of the early turns in this deck can be pretty simple. You have a card on curve, just play it. Use the Ring of Magic pretty aggressively when you have it. If you don't, just hope you draw one, two, and a three. It's nice to have one drops in the deck. Uh, sort of mitigates not having the ring. 
can sort of fight back against these other aggressive decks like that. He is going right for the dome. Which I don't hate, but I'm looking forward to playing Hive Defender. Very much. Very much so looking forward to playing Hive Defender. I wish I could play two cards this turn. I really do. Because I would like to play Scouting Patrol to take out two of those uh, points of damage coming at me, but it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense otherwise. I could play Resolute Ally on the left and just make my board that much more threatening. Uh, I'm already going to break a Runify attack with both things. So yeah, I think it's probably right. We have obviously a very high chance to hit. Uh, 48 out of 50 is 96%. Ward. Sometimes when you say it, it happens. This was not one of those times. Exactly a seventh of the time you say it, it happens. As a matter of fact. Alkash has sort of been growing on me again recently. I used to think it was uh, pretty good and underrated, then I started playing with it a lot, then there were a lot of Murkwater Witches back then, as well as the ever-present Firebolts and Executes. Uh, so I uh, went away from it yet again. You know, Rift Thane is not looking bad. It's easy to forget that can be a guard sometimes. And it allows us to play Scouting Patrol and Alakash along with it. And that seems like a lot of stuff for my aggro deck opponent to answer effectively. That might be the play. I think he's probably done. But we just don't know. Alright, he's done. <sighs> East March Crusader, you know, it's a value, but he's giving me cards anyway, so this is not the matchup. This is what I talk about when I'm when I'm judging cards and stuff, and I'm like, well, you really don't want the draw power against aggressive decks. Like, you know, I'm not going to say no to extra cards in my hand, but I am going to say no to spending more Magicka to play them. So, Hype Defender obviously defends better, but it also gets wrecked by a single target removal or silence better. But I think we should probably just start attacking. Well, we shouldn't attack first. We should really decide first because we need the Rift Thane to have guard if we want to play it in the first place. We could get him down to exactly 20, however. We could see what the first rune might have in store for us. And then judge whether or not we Rift Thane. You can't defeat us. And we do that with the exact wrong one. Because I, for some reason, blanked on this having only 3 attack. I doubt it's too relevant. shall fly true. Didn't think that would be pointed anywhere else. I am not disappointed. So we can get him down, we can hit him to 7, or we can hit him 4 7 down to 13. This will have 5 attack, we'll have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This will die. 12, 13, 14. So we will have lethal on board, theoretically. Let's try this. I don't think he can kill me, and this should be at least a bit annoying. Prophecies, that's good. That has to go over there. Scouting patrol, obviously. Fill up that lane. Finally got ward. Seems good. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Staring at 13 points of life. We're at 18. He has to spend 4 damage or some form of removal to get rid of my Rift Thane. If he's having to spend removal, he's not spending mana or magicka adding damage to the board, so that should be good news for us overall. This lane is just lost. There's no way he can win that again. So he has to fight through in the shadow lane, which I'm sure his deck is fully capable of doing. But fortunately for us, we had a very strong early curve, so we can sort of play the race game. Or as it would appear. If this deck were to be tooled to uh, do even better against other aggressive decks, I'm actually not sure the matchups, like I've said, there. we have some good tools, some good guards. You know, Hive Defender, House Carl, these cards are very solid. Uh, Rift Thane, when you're behind, very, very good at getting those early turns. You know, I do think this deck has the tools and the means, but if you wanted to tool it even more to beat other aggro decks... Um, and you weren't playing any control at all, for example, the House Carls, or excuse me, the uh, the Jarls, or something else could come out for uh, Tribune. Obviously, Pillaging Tribune is a fantastic way to heal. He is going for it in that lane, man. He recognizes the fact that he might have just been dead on board. Breaks through for two with this attack. Swordork Headhunter is at risk of death. Now, if he breaks a rune, he could give me the extra damage I need. Or ways to very efficiently clear. If I can clear the board, there's no way I die from 12 life with 5 magicka from him. So we, uh, we've seen the Nord Firebrands that he's gotten from the one raiding party he's played. So, that said, I think the safest line would probably be Hive Defender and Execute. Um, yeah. And I think we just trade the 1-1 one -one in there. 
Kind of unfortunate that didn't get drained at any point leading up to this. That would have been incredible for us. But we don't need to execute first. We'll do this. This trade is obviously going to happen. This trade is obviously going to happen. It's a bit curious whether or not I need to, like, full clear and, and really trade all of this. With the Hive Defender, I'm feeling very safe. You have been warned. Stack order was pretty much just wrong. You have been if he got another sharpshooter, we know he's playing you sharpshooter. I feel safe enough to where I don't need to do this attack. But I also know there's probably no way he can combat this. You have been I think this is probably better though. You can't defeat us. In case he's playing, like, close call or something, I guess we get rid of the one with charge. But yeah, my, my thinking there was just that if he had an answer for this, like, powering through it somehow, and also, like, Earthbone spinnering this, I don't think it's possible to answer both of those, but if it were, we have five damage, or we have at least four damage still on the board without the, uh, the guards being on board. But he's only at five Magicka, and I'm not seeing a way that he can deal with everything with five Magicka, so I think it's just fine. But if we had traded that, we'd only have the three damage, obviously, and he'd be at a higher life point by one, so we'd have, like, three damage on board versus five in hand. I think we have it. Or we don't have it. <laughs> be nuts. That would be nuts, guys. I'm pretty sure I know the cards in this game after seven months, but then you just find ways to die at life totals you didn't think it was possible to die at. <laughs> Two Magicka, nine damage. Can it be done, guys? He's trying to make me believe it can be done. I don't think it can be done, though. Come and warm yourself. Time to fight. Fire. He would need to have literally four Nord Firebrands in his hand for that to be a thing. Alright. Let's play some Lions. Oh my. <laughs> that was a fun one. So, Agra Warrior, man. Agra Token Warrior. That's a lot of Northwind Outposts. Hopefully you all enjoyed a brief look into one of the meme decks, you know, I usually try to play things that I think are competitive. I think this deck, uh, I think I built it pretty well, but I'm not, you know, the concept. We're trying to make use of some cards that, uh, don't really see a whole lot of play on the ladder, so hopefully you enjoyed a bit of a different take on a deck, and not something you usually get on this channel, I guess. People wanted to see some more, uh, not, you know, established archetypes, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. Hopefully this gave you that. I think this is a really fun list, so feel free to check it out if you're interested in playing a lot of yellow cards on your opponent and uh, getting Descendant of Alakash up to some pretty impressive heights, stat-wise and effect-wise. Uh, if that piques your interest, hopefully you take a look at the list. Maybe I'll do a deck tech on it. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below, any other decks you want to see. Uh, as always, uh, look forward to reading the comments. Feel free to like and subscribe. Follow the stream at the link down below, and I will see you guys next time.